Hey guys, Gameboy3D Hunter here once again, and today I've got a Winbook 8050D. What is this computer? Uh, this is a unit that I got for only a few dollars uh, as a parts unit. Of course I wanted to see if it worked, so I did plug it up, and I plugged it up and magic smoke came out of it. Hooray! So this motherboard is completely toast. But... Have no fear, I have a new motherboard. And the motherboard is actually a MyTac 8050 motherboard. So, and if you didn't know, MyTac is, uh, I believe, Italian or a Turkish company. One of the two. And they just supply OEM parts and such. It's kind of like Clevo, but more for Europe instead of uh, Taiwan and China. So yeah, it's this thing here. Looks like it could work, so we're not going to risk uh, damaging it at all here. Just gonna find a spot of, re of reference so that we can confirm that it is the correct board. Yep, it's got the PCMCIA and then LAN and phone line right all next to each other. So this is the correct board. Hooray! I'll leave you all. Nice and packaged up. Retract you anyways. Rip that. Alright, so before we take this apart, we need to see what we're going to be putting the guts into. Now you may have seen this in another video or off camera here. This is a limited edition Voodoo Envy M370. This is in beautiful custom white. Envy limited edition. So yeah, this is what we are reviving. Uh, there is currently nothing inside of it. <laughs> so, we want to make this thing come back to life. That is the mission. Let's hope we have great success and have no real issues. Any issues we get from taking apart this, we can learn how to avoid putting it back into the Envy. We've got our parts tray here, we have our screwdriver here, we are good to go. Alright, first of all we're going to go ahead and take out the battery. Definitely sure it's toast from the magic smoke, but you never know, so I will hold on to it in case the one included with the white envy is also just dead. We can, you know, give some hope. Now, thankfully, there does seem to be all the necessary screws on the bottom panel. Don't need to go looking for an impossible to find screw set for a laptop. We already have all the screws right here with this one. Huh, that one's being weird. Alright, so I guess they are just held in very strongly. Good to know. I'll leave that one over there. This is a Wi-Fi card. I will need that for the new board, so we will go ahead and take it out right now. I have a 80 gig Intel SSD on standby. Just to throw in to see if it'll work. 
Uh, I don't know if this has SATA or IDE power. So we will, I guess, find out in a bit. Right, this did come with uh, two memory sticks. So that's cool. Back into the parts tray. Let's see what memory sticks we've got. Uh, we've got DDR1 256 megs. So, looks like max we can hold with this is uh, 2 gigs. That's a shame. I was hoping the board I got would be a little bit different, like an updated model. Kind of like the uh, popular ish uh, M59K and M59KE. One uses DDR1, one uses DDR2. One also uses dual core chips versus single core. This one memory card is being a pain. Come on. There we go. I know it's a damaged board, and you know, we don't really care what happens physically to it. I don't want to risk damaging the memory card. It's just a board failure. It doesn't mean it's a CPU memory hard drive failure, too. I suspect this will be the hard drive. Yep, looks like it. Now is this a SATA or an IDE hard drive? Let's find out. Just uses one screw for the caddy way over here. Seems to be our first different one and oh man it uses IDE. Come on. Oh well. And this one is a 60 gig Fujitsu drive. I guess I'll just hold on to this and reuse it since I don't think I have any other uh, IDE drives. <laughs> yep. Big bad on my part to not have an IDE. Or PETA, I guess, technically. But, you know. Just gotta deal with it. Oh, cool. It looks like. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say it looks like the other screw is captive, but no, it's not. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it with all the other. Uh, bottom panel of screws. Thankfully this computer does seem to be as simple to take apart and that is very helpful. The CPU uh, area is right here. do have a good condition heatsink. And it looks like there maybe could have been a graphics chip here. Maybe uh, old ATI or something. But yeah, whatever. Being careful with the screws, I don't know if they're super spring loaded and will fly out at me. Yep, they kind of are. So good thing I was careful. I suspect this will have uh, old Intel Celeron dual core. Or probably single core. Pentium M age I believe, so. 
Yeah. Or whatever kind of paste it had on before. Well, it's not very good. In fact, it looks like it had literally no thermal paste. It just had a thermal pad thing-ish, whatever you call it. Let's double check my theory. Uh, whatever it is, it is 1.5 gigahertz. It says 1500 on it. So, big slow. There we go. Here she come. Put you in the box. And I may end up taking off this bottom pad and replacing it with some thermal grizzly. It's a very small looking cooling solution, but oh well. While we still have the structural rigidity of the main chassis still being screwed down, let's go ahead and take a look at how we remove this keyboard. Is it the same usual uh, two or three tabs up by the keyboard? Yes, it is. Okay. Or at least it feels like that. What's going on here? That's actually very helpful. There's a place you can push down from the bottom here. I think there's some screws still holding it in here. I would like to find out. This does seem to be a pretty high-end model for the time. We have the regular speakers like in the corners here, and then there's a big subwoofer here. Unless that's some other fan that I'm not seeing any vents for. But yeah, let's work on getting the keyboard off. That'll be probably our main work area for now. you can't see any of this just two or three tabs and man this thing is dirty underneath this thing must have been outside or something no wonder it went poof I don't want to get too close to this but I need to see how to undo the tabs here on the side of the keyboard One more good look at this insides. It's not very clean. <laughs> Alright, so 
with that out of the way, we can go back under, where it's remarkably cleaner, and I guess just start the forever long process of taking out all the bottom screws, because it seems that's all we need to do. This might be one of the easiest computers to take apart I've ever done. And these are a separate length screw, it seems. Hopefully they're all one length and it'll be very easy and we'll have this thing rebuilt in no time. I'm talking about the Envy. This old windbook will forever be missed by nobody. I'm trying my best to keep it in view. I can't. I don't have a good uh, sight of the viewfinder and the camcorder. I really do need a new camcorder. It was, it's a good Panasonic, especially for the time. But that's just it. For the time, it's about as old as my channel. But I don't do enough camcorder stuff to really warrant getting a brand new system. One thing I do have a question about is the DVD drive. How do we get it out? I haven't seen a screw on the bottom side here that would loosen the tab like it would in most systems. We do have some long screws, it seems. Those do seem to be different, so we'll need to keep track of them. Does this really only have one longer out of place screw? <laughs> I mean, I hope so, and that'll make the build so much easier. Don't have to remember all the placements of uh, 10,000 weird looking screws. And there seems to be some Bluetooth thing. It's held in with some. Uh, tape. Alright, I got the little piece off. It must have been a piece I modem thing. Looking around for any screws I've missed. screws under the hard drive area. They're loose already, well. Wow. And now the last screws I could think of are either under the keyboard or where the keyboard was on the hinge covers and on the back thing holding the hinges in. I am unsure what all is needed to uh, take out the thing, so we'll keep the screws separate. That's the thing with taking apart an old laptop like this that you've never seen. It's all guesswork. Thankfully for this computer, it's very simple guesswork.
All right, now we're going to go ahead and take another look at the disgusting uh, shield and undo a few more screws. Feel like I'm breathing in like asbestos. I'm gonna get lung cancer. Alright, there must be some more screws or something under the hinge covers, so let's get them off. If I can. That is how you do that. I missed some screws under the battery. Oh, there we go. I did find the right screw. It was in a different place. Okay, then. There's no side screws or anything. It must just be under the hinge cover. I do want to be very careful though. If they get ruined, I don't know if I'll ever be able to get them fixed. They do seem to be held in somehow, so just gotta keep poking at it. Thankfully the screen can go back and not cause us issues. I forgot a screw. That might explain almost everything. Can't say I've forgotten one on this side, so... I guess all I can really say is maybe I did and I'm bad. Hmm, hmm. There we go. If the Palmer isn't in that bad of shape actually, it's just a little shielding on the motherboard. That's the thing in awful and disgusting shape. Alright, hinge covers are free. I will put them on VNV. Free and V. Alright, we have a lot of stuff down here. Definitely looks like this thing was left outside or something horrible. Alright, first things first. We need to get rid of this heat shield. I guess a board rigid fire. 
Got my dog. I don't know why he won't be quiet. Seems to be a number of screws holding in the heat shield here. Oh man, I hope the Envy comes with a heat shield. I don't want to have to clean this. I just want to throw it away and never see it again. I'm sure you can see some of it, but in real life, the camera picks up nothing compared to what it is in real life. It is shockingly ugly. throw this into a septic tank. <laughs> Alright, ash for the board. Once we unscrewed everything, there's really not a whole lot uh, holding it in, is there? You need to undo a few screws and then it should come free. I don't know if the ND has any other parts missing other than the motherboard and all the screws and insides that connect to the motherboard. Wouldn't surprise me if it is missing literally everything. This is a speaker or something, so we've got to be careful. I want to just pull it uh, out of the connector and kill it. Oh my god, exactly like that. I thought I had it free. Oh man, that connector is just glued in there or something. Killed the right speaker. Unless the Envy is missing the speaker too, I shouldn't need to worry about it. I hope I don't need to worry about it. Let us continue on then, I guess. No use crying over spilt milk, as they say. like short stubby screws for the motherboard. You screw over here on the left side of the base plate. And over here as well. I'm not sure if we need to remove this to take out the motherboard, but I'm going to give it a shot.
I think it's free other than the Wi-Fi cables are still going through it. Yeah, on the bottom side, I'm not seeing anything still really connected, so I guess let's free the Wi-Fi wires. It's just an uh, anti-static panel there. Other than the screen cables, I can't think of anything else that's still holding in the board here. Now, there is one thing over on the right side here. I got that without it trying to escape. Alright, the last thing I can think of is the VGA connector screw things. Maybe they keep the board in place in the corner here. Possible. Because I'm sure I don't need to remove the hinge screws and the screen. Freedom. Just a left side speaker, and that's how we take out the board of a MyTac 8050. Now the board's pretty clean from this side. Just whatever all the residue is on the uh, top base cover plate, uh, that must have been what shorted out the thing. I'm going to go ahead and remove the BIOS battery too. I might need that. And there seems to be a IDE controller board. Or, you know, or something. Last thing I need from this is the PCI modem cable. And this thing can now go bye bye. Cool. Join me next time when we put this back into the white Voodoo ND case and get a working system for the first time in years. Thanks, Gambia. I will see you guys in the future.